dates available uh, December, uh, and they gave us uh, both Fox and ESPN a January, January date and a late February date. We could do the fight when we presented that to Tyson Fury. Said, look, I'm training every day. Got to do a fight this year. If Wilder is not available, which he fight, uh, I'll do a fight in England. Uh, and I think Frank picked Warren picked December five, uh, and I'll look forward uh, next spring uh, to a fight against Anthony Joshua. Joshua beat Pula. Those are the words of Bob Arum as he explains in detail what really went on with the negotiations and what ESPN versus Fox, how these guys were trying to get together and why Tyson Fury is not fighting Deontay Wilder this year. Okay, now things stuck out what Bob Arum said that I can't understand, but it's certain things that I can't, okay? This is a fair channel over here. When I understand that this fight's supposed to have been so July, okay? We can't do anything about that in July, okay? Yeah, then it moved to October. Well, that date is already passed because it's damn near November, right? So that fight's supposed to happen. And... Now December came about, okay? They he did Tyson Fury agreed to do that. And um because that particular date, they didn't really think ahead enough to understand that hey, those are championship football games, which is one of the biggest sports here in America. They couldn't do that, so ESPN and Fox could get together and do one early January or February, and Tyson Fury was like, no. He decided, no, this is not going to work. This won't happen. I've been training all year, every day. So I want to fight in December. Okay, so that was a no-go. So what he'll do, he what Tyson Fury decided to do was fight in England as, you know, a homecoming and then fight Anthony Joshua and move on. Now, mind you that the contract had expired. Okay, it had expired, but understand, it was already expired by December. December would have been the date that would, it, it was past the expiration. So if it was past the expiration date, Tyson Fury was just being modest. He was just being cordial with the idea of fighting him. Okay? But, but see, the main problem is is Tyson Fury last, but Deontay Wilder first? And let me explain. Wilder, we don't know what's going on with Wilder. And then when we heard from Wilder, what people said other than Wilder contradict what Wilder said. The last thing we heard about Deontay Wilder was he wasn't even training at all. He admitted he wasn't even training, so how would he be ready anyway so what bob arum said wilder is unavailable anyway so let, let, let's be real about this now because i was looking at it like well if wilder was ready if wilder was training which we don't know because he you know the last thing that was reported he said he was not ready because he was not training because of the injury so then the next question you ask yourself when did you have the surgery for your injury See, that's all uncertain because it was another person saying, oh, he's ready to fight. He was ready to fight in July or he was ready to fight um, in September. So if he was ready to fight, when did he have this surgery? But I thought the reason they didn't fight in July was the coronavirus. See, people are not getting their story straight at all. So they got to get their story straight over there. We know that. And see what happened since they couldn't get their story straight and Deontay Wilder 
I think what it was, so many people were saying so many different things over there that they wouldn't really organize that Wilder didn't want to say anything to incriminate him because he already fucked up when he said something anyway. Because Shelly Finkel saying things, you had Junior Father, then you had Tate Jones, then you had Shelly Finkel, then you had all these people saying different things about Deontay Wilder and Deontay Wilder was not coming forth. Now, supposedly he came forth saying he wasn't training at all. Why would Tyson Fury wait around for him? He's already changed it three times, at least. July to October, then to December. Then they tried to turn it to the 5th. Then Al Heyman dropped the ball on the 5th of October for Spence Garcia. Why? Again, why do you think he did that? Because he knew that fight was more credible and that fight could sell. Okay, and that was two fighters that he could control. Okay, I did a video about that yesterday. So... Tyson was like, hey, if he's not available, why do we why are we even worried about a third fight? And then you really hear from Wilder, and I'm not convinced Wilder really wants this fight at this point, because he would have done the same thing he did last year when he found out Tyson bailed on him. He exploded. Like I told you guys, he didn't do none of that shit now. He's too quiet, so he's just letting the shit blow over. He might raise his head up after the uh, after everything has been said and done. He might say something after the fact when it, at that point, it really doesn't matter. I've never seen an outspoken man like that to this day, right? So quiet to this day. You know, and it, it, it's just strange to me. It's real strange. Coming from the words of Deontay Wilder, a brash, outspoken a uh, young, strong black man like he is, now he ain't saying shit, don't make sense. It ain't adding up. But if he was in shape and he was ready to fight, him and Shelly Finkel should agree to fight Tyson Fury in the UK. There's no reason to look for F.A. Ajagba or Caballel or Oscar Rivas or any of those guys when Deontay Wilder is ready to fight and then he could, first of all, have his homecoming, okay? Have his homecoming, then obligate the contractual agreement for the rematch, but, you know, and do that anyway just to, just to be a man of his word, right? So that could be that. Now, will he do that? I'm not sure, but we don't know what, again, what's going on with Deontay Wilder because no one has been able to communicate him with him the way that he needs to be uh, engaging with other people to know what's really true and what's really not true. It's just a bunch of BS at the end of the day. But anyway, those are the words from uh, Bob Arum. You guys tell me what you think about his comments. Of course, please subscribe, and you guys can counterpunch Peace.